All right. It's been a couple of years since I've spoken with this man, but I'm very excited to have the opportunity to do so right now. Let us say hello to the former Bellator lightweight champion, former UFC lightweight contender, Ill Will Brooks joins the program. Will, good to see you, man. How are you? Man, I'm good, brother. Good, man. Just blessed, you know, living with my family, you know, take care of the wife and kids and just trying to stay in shape, man. I hear you, man. So I mean, there's just so much I want to talk to you about, Will. First off, we haven't seen you compete since the 2019 fight with Glace and Tebow at Battlefield FC. It was a super controversial stoppage, a pretty controversial event in general, which we'll get to in a moment. But, you know, we're also in the middle of a <laughs> pandemic, which threw a lot of things for a loop. I guess what have you been up to this last year and a half, two years? Man, I'll be honest, man. I've been I've just I've been in this space where I've been really focused on developing myself as a man, you know. Um I've just kind of, you know, at first I was like, man, I got to get back. I want to get back to fighting and whatnot and doing things like that. But then I started just started realizing that I haven't done enough to develop as a man, you know, in, in my everyday, every like everyday life outside of competing. And I just started noticing uh, blind spots that I had. So during this time, I've kind of stepped away from, you know, chasing down fights and things like that and just really focused on you know, developing my mental, emotional state, you know, and making sure that I'm the best man that I could possibly be. Because, um, look, man, when all the fighting and stuff is done, I still have to be Will Brooks in my everyday life, you know, and, and be the best dad I could be and the best husband that I could be. So I've put a lot of my energy into just trying to get better as a man. That's good to hear. Uh, I, I think a lot of us kind of took this time during the pandemic. I mean, it was obviously a bad situation, but a lot of people were able to sort of take the time to to use it to their advantage, you know, build, you know, sort of inc improve relationship with family, wife, kids, all that stuff, spend that extra time and use it wisely. Do you feel like this time has been, you, you've been able to use that time to your advantage more effectively than, than most, I guess? Yeah, definitely, man. And I, I think for me, I've put a lot, and I think we're in a we're in a space in our in the world right now where people are really focused on mental health. And um, for me, that was one thing that I really dove into and really tried to put my mind to wrap my mind around that. And um, I've taken time to like, you know, seeing a the therapist and things like that, just trying to uh, trying to test every avenue to make sure that I'm mentally and emotionally in the best place I could possibly be in. You know, so. Um, you know, seeing therapists and, you know, just getting more in touch with my own personal feelings and getting a, a awareness of who I am as a person, you know, and uh, just, you know, dealing with like different things like generational trauma and things that um, maybe not your own personal trauma, but things that have been passed on along the years from, you know, uh, from your father or his father's father, things like that. And I think it was one of those things I started really kind of putting my mind toward and you know, talking with their talking with my therapist and things like that, it just really kind of has enlightened me on how you know this generational trauma, how these hidden things can affect us and impact us, as far as just being a being a competitor, as far as that, and being a father and a husband. So yeah, during this time, man, I, I've really dove in into you know getting better mentally and emotionally, and just trying to make sure that. You know, I don't make mistakes that I did in the past. You know, what what, what sort of mistakes, if you don't mind me asking? Just like uh, just some of the things as far as my attitude and the way I approach some things. You know, as far as the politics of this sport. You know, I think uh, looking back on things, you start realizing that you steps out, you stepped outside of yourself. You know, you lost track of who you are as a person, especially when you have a success and this thing is moving over here and this piece is moving over here and you want to have control of everything. And you start to lose track of um, w what brought you to the party, you know, what brought you to the dance and you start doing other things outside of that. And, and you start, for me, I started trying to find the answers and deciding that, oh, I can make the answer. I've got the answer. And, and I just started digging a hole a little bit deeper than where I was, you know, and, Physically, I was able to compete as a fighter, but mentally and emotionally, I just felt like I was somewhere else for a long time. And um, really having to step back and having this time to step back and really realize that, hey, you know, like you mentally and emotionally, we're not in a good place. You were dealing with, I was dealing with a great deal of depression that I didn't realize. And um, it just manifested itself in different ways, which I think happens a lot. So during this time, I've just, you know, almost reintroducing myself to myself. So uh, that's 
kind of some of the things that I wish I, I would have known back then that I was, you know, you're battling against um, maybe some type of family things, you know, like um, family, family traits and family generational traumas and things like that. And they tend to block you in, in your everyday life. And you, you can't figure out why you're mentally blocking yourself or emotionally blocking yourself. So I've taken that time to really focus on like, all right, well, why was I feeling this way? And why was I reacting this way? And I've been able to address some of those things. It's always an interesting journey when you can start peeling back those layers and and looking that deep inside. That's for sure. Um, I, I know you want to kind of put that battlefield experience behind you for a number of reasons, but one of the big stories coming out of that event and other events they've had where fighters just weren't getting paid, like coming out of their first event, fighters were getting paid. And then coming out of the second event, which you were part of, you were one of those fighters who had a hard time getting paid. Did you ever get paid compensated for that fight with Gleason? No, nah, man, I haven't gotten paid. Um, I'll be honest with you, man. We tried. Um, I went through legal, legal, the legal way of getting my money, you know, and um, it just felt like it was one of those things where they had made it so difficult to get the funds or even get get paid. They made it so difficult to go through that through the legal process that you wouldn't you would have ended up putting more money in it than getting what you got back, you know. And it just it was. Um, it just turned into one of those things where I just had to step back and think to myself, you know what, Will, um, if you had made different decisions, and this is just me as a person, I take responsibility for uh, like anything in my life, good or bad. So I looked at it and was like, you know what, you rushed into something where you knew that there was some issues in the past, you know, and, you know, you know going into it that they hadn't paid fighters and you knew it was a little sketchy. Even when we were out there, during fight week, I kid you not, like, I had a hard time, like, kind of flipping that switch and wanted to be a competitor just because things just kind of felt weird and felt off, you know, and um, you kind of try to block it out, but, you know, it was just too difficult, and after after the fight and, you know, not getting paid or whatnot, it didn't really shock me or surprise me. It just, the whole week of, of the fight week just felt like, yeah, something's not right here, and, um it just kind of went south, and like I said, we made attempts at trying to figure out a way to, you know, get the money and whatnot, but it just didn't happen. And I was like, you know what, I would much rather protect my mental health and continue to grow rather than put this energy into this and allow for this negative thing to to build up on me. I just recognized that, hey, maybe it's just time to let that one slide, you know, let that step away. It's going to hurt. Step away from it and just move forward. Yeah, it's I mean, it's just so ridiculous <laughs> that that is going on and, you know, it's happened so many times and it happens like in the sport in a number of different ways. It just sucks. But uh, yeah. around a year or so ago, there were reports out that you had signed with Eris FC, along with like a slew of other former UFC fighters like John Moraga, Juan Adams, to, to name a few. There was talks about you competing for them in August, I believe, before that event was canceled. Is, is that true? Did you, in fact, sign something with them? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I had signed a contract with them and, you know, we had the fights booked and, you know, they had their their uh, their location set up for the events. The first one, the first fight, the first fight was supposed to be in uh, South, South Africa, if I remember correctly. And then, uh, you know, they had to move things around. So they were like, all right, we want to hit South Africa. Then we want to do Belgium. And uh, so they had a couple of different uh, things set up and events already figured out. And, you know, they sent me contracts uh, for my opponent. And, um, yeah, we had everything signed. And, you know, COVID showed up. It was like, hey, everybody stand still and we'll let you know when, when you can get back to living your life. So, um, yeah, things just got slowed down. So I've just been one of those people that has been impacted by COVID and mixed martial arts, I guess. So are you still like essentially under contract with them, just sort of waiting for the phone to ring, but obviously open to take other opportunities if something pops up? Yeah, they've given their they've given me their blessing to go and fight outside outside my contract. You know, they haven't fully released me from the contract. So we've been just kind of hanging back and, uh, you know, you you look for other fights and, you know, you start game planning and trying to figure out like, all right, what are we going to do here? How are we going to approach this? Like, what do I want to do? with the rest of the years that I have in my career, you know, and um, you start just looking at the whole landscape of MMA and just kind of like build it from there because you can have your own game plan. But right now, like we've seen, 
um, something like COVID can pop up or a pandemic can pop up right now and, and shut all that down. And we're not even close to, you know, being done with this, you know. So um, you just kind of start watching and seeing the landscape and start calculating. And that's kind of what we've been doing now is, you know, I, I haven't lied to anybody. I've been somewhat vocal about it, but then I've kind of been in the background. Like my one of my biggest goals is to try to get back to the UFC. And I've had some missteps in trying to make that happen jumping at things that I shouldn't have jumped at and like I like the battlefield FC jumping at that jumping at this jumping at the next thing and things just not really working out and now we're just like hey man you know what maybe this this COVID situation and this pandemic situation is a time for you to like a, a freeze in life maybe God is trying to tell you hey sit still figure yourself out as a man and then we can do other stuff you know so it's just kind of hanging back and seeing what happens so yeah, when it when it comes to because you were supposed to fight in November too, right? You had something set up for like a, a regional fight in November. Cause I think I saw a video of you saying that like you had two opponents yeah. that weren't able to make it, and then you were just like, rather than cut yeah. all this weight and get to the fight, like, it, what if they don't have an opponent for me? It's kind of a waste, right? Yeah, yeah. I had I had got I was booked with um, Strike Card Productions, is an MMA uh, promotion in Alabama. Um, I was talking with them and it was just a way, you know what, man, I'm like, you know what? I got to get active. I got to get busy. I need to go out and compete. I don't really care where it's at, when it's at, um, how much money is for. I'm not really concerned about money. I, my, my, my family and my, my wife and my kids are taken care of and we've been blessed financially, you know? So it was one of those things where it's like, all right, well, it's time to lock down and figure out what the, what the game plan is. And that was, I'm in a reset mode. Like, uh, it, we're in a business of what have you done for me lately? And I haven't been able to do anything. So we were just like, you know what? Let's just go out there and get active and get competing and show people that, hey, we're not just hanging out waiting, you know? So, uh, yes, yeah, so I had booked that fight. And um, one guy ended up testing positive for COVID and he had to pull out, which is, you know, expected. And then uh, the second opponent that they gave me, he ended up hurting his knee or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but he had to pull out and, it was like the week of the fight and they were trying to still trying to find an opponent. And I just started thinking, Hey, well, you've made this mistake before, you know? Um, and I started going back to like my Oliveira fight with, when I fought, uh, um, cowboy Oliveira, when he, he missed weight, like six by six pounds, six, seven pounds or whatever. I was like, Hey, you allowed yourself to get emotional when, and react when really you should have did the smart thing and just, Hey, you know what, man, let's just hang back. We'll wait for the next fight, you know? So that's what I did. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to put myself in this position where I'm just chasing something. And then I hurt my body because I cut weight and there's no fight. With everything you've gone through over the last like five or so years between the UFC run, the PFL run and everything since then, I guess, how would you describe your relationship with MMA right now? Um, I honestly, I, you kind of start to get that feeling like, yeah, man, maybe I'm, maybe I should be calling it by now, you know? But then I start, st I start, I stop and I look at everything and I watch the way it played out and I, I look at the pieces. And I, one of the things that I started looking at it, that really stood out the most, especially during this time of just trying to grow as a person, is just realizing my role to play in a lot of those situations, you know, where. I was blessed and was given opportunities and um, just through some, you know, mental blocks and emotional blocks and things like that. And, and this is why I go back to generational, you know, generational traumas and things of that nature where you're dealing with things that, you know, your upbringing kind of blocks you from getting to where you want to go in life and your mindset and uh, your attitude and the way you, you process things going on around you and, I come from a background where my family didn't come from a whole lot. You know, my mom and dad, like the addiction, things like that, difficulties in prison and jail. And, and we have a bunch of brilliant, highly intelligent, highly capable people in my family. But one of the things that we've always kind of done is like block ourselves, almost block our own success. And during this time of having to be away from the sport and really focus on myself, it was like, wow, like, I didn't really understand how I was I was pushing these great opportunities away from myself, and um, 
you know, just doing this time, just kind of learning it, like feeling like, oh, wait, now I kind of understand who I am. And physically, I'm like, man, I can go and compete with anybody at any, in any given day of the week, you know, but mentally, emotionally, am I am I fighting a fight, uh, a hidden fight? And I'm, I'm I'm unprepared for it, you know, and this has just been one of those times where I'm like, wow, OK, I was battling something else. It wasn't just competing. It wasn't just fighting for me. I was I was battling, you know, trying to be the person to change generational things, you know. So I put a lot of I, I was carrying a lot and it was impacting my 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 mental state and the way I was responding and how I was operating in life. Yeah, because I, I remember like when you had signed with the UFC, you were the Bellator lightweight champion. The relationship between yourself and Scott Coker and the organization wasn't great, if we're being honest. And you yeah. signing with the UFC was a very big deal. Like it was a huge story. And then you get there and it didn't really pan out for you. And there's always like two roads you can take at this point. One is like you could regret everything and wish you could go back and do it all over again. And then there's the other part, kind of like what you're doing right now, where you reflect upon it, you grow from it and you kind of like try to answer the whys because of it if you could go back and do it again would you change things up or are you happy with the way things played out to kind of put you in the position mentally that you're in right now yeah see that that's always a tricky question right because everybody's like oh i don't regret anything and i if i go back i'd do it the same but i i can't say that because it's one like one part of me wants to say yeah i i would i would go back and i would do it the same but part of me also, now where I'm at now, mentally and emotionally, I'm like, wow, if I would go back, I would have I did things differently because it's like I wasn't, I was, I, was, I was unaware of a lot of mental and emotional things that I was going through in my own life and how I was giving so much energy to fighting the system and fighting this and arguing with this and screaming at this that I didn't realize that there was no fight to be had. It was just more generational trauma that just instinctually made me feel like I needed to fight everything. And that was just not in just mixed martial arts or competing as a fighter, but in my everyday life, man, my things were great at home with my wife. I had just had my daughter, just married, new house. Everything's going really well, but... I was constantly finding ways to like self-sabotage and it's like, man, like, yeah. So if I could go back, like, yeah, I would change a lot of things because I'm more conscious of this like ability that has come through like generations of self-sabotaging ourselves and in the Brooks family. And if I, I would, I would go back and change that. But at the same time, I would leave it the same because I wouldn't, know what I know now, you know, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would have really addressed it if I knew it, you know, I could have been like, oh yeah, this is, this is just who I am and this is just how it's going to be. But I could have been way more destructive to more things outside of just MMA, but in my own personal life, like I could have wrecked things with my wife, could have wrecked things with, you know, my house or things like that or whatever, you know? So yeah, you want to go back, you want to do some things differently, but still stay consistent with, your your morals and your values and where where you stand you know this sport i mean you're living it right now man it's a it's a wild ride and you know i'm sure you're kind of watching everything from the outside and one of the big stories in 2020 and so far in 2021 is a former opponent of yours that that you're tied to in a lot of ways michael chandler a man you have two wins over even stopped him the second time you fought him and it was kind of a turning point sort of rivalry in both of your careers like Michael Chandler when he when he looks back to where he's at now he reflects a lot upon those two fights and that sort of like changed his mindset and where he's at now obviously he's in the UFC just got a big win knocked out Dan Hooker in his octagon debut and he's in the discussion to fight for the belt right now so what has that been like for you watching Michael Chandler in the UFC and and what he's been able to do thus far yeah man I mean I, I never wish ill on anybody. I want nothing but success for everyone, you know, and I've, I beat the guy, but we all evolve. We continue to get better, you know, and things change and especially MMA, the landscape changes, the timing on when you come in and when things happen for you, you might just hit that, that jackpot. And I think if I'm being completely honest, I think one of the things that I've always respected about Michael Chandler is the people that he had around him. He has, he has had like a really great established team around him. And I'm talking about not just in um, 
like the fighting and training, but he's had a great business team and people that are kind of navigating and helping him during the politics of all this stuff and how to time this and how to time this and how to move that. And that was one of that's one thing that I would I would say that if I could go back, I would change is that I'm not saying that the people that I had around me were bad people, but I just don't think that they knew how to really balance and navigate a lot of the situations that I came into and and I didn't know how to do it myself you know I'm an emotional guy so I'm jumping off the I'm jumping off the cliff on anything you know so it would have been nice to have somebody be like hey well go sit down somewhere and let me do this you know and um but whatever but he's he's had a success and I'm I'm hey man best of luck to him keep doing your thing but I tell you what man I, as a competitor it, it gets you fired up you get a little angry you get a little you get a little bitter. You get a little. Uh, you get a little pissy taste in your mouth because you like, and and I'm trying not to curse right now because I'm getting all gassed up. But I beat any of those guys, especially you looking at a guy like these dead hookers and he knocks out this dead hooker. Blah blah blah. I was like, well, as a competitor, you're like, yo, like that's I, like you just got knocked out by a 45er and then you beat up some old man Ben Henderson, and you know you come in and. And I get pissed at Dan Hooker because I'm like, yo, that that guy's not hard to beat. Like he's not hard to beat. And now I'm I'm sound like a jerk now, <laughs> but it is what it is. As a competitor, that's where I'm at. It, it lights a fire. So I'll tell you what, like when I saw that happen, I jumped up off the couch and I was gassed up and I was like, man, like I can beat these guys, man. I know I can beat these guys. Like I could jump up off my couch right now and beat Chandler, beat Dan Hooker, beat these guys, but I'm not in a position to say that. You know, I can't get on media and say that. I can't get on social media and say that because right now I'm, I am Mr. Irrelevant in MMA, you know? So it's one of those things where you look at it, you're like, all right, well, I got to get to work. And that right now I'm trying to get to work and, you know, maybe God puts it in my position where I can get back to the UFC and I can get back some of those wins that I left. And then, like, after that, we saw Dustin Poirier knock out Conor McGregor. And I know you and Dustin have, you know, had a relationship over the years. What was that like to watch Dustin get a win like that and kind of get put in the position he's in right now? Man, I tell you what, man. I, if there's anybody, I, I get more excited and I get more proud and happy and emotional for guys that I've trained with to have success. You know, like, to look at that and be like – you had you had some type of role to play. And I'm not saying I had something to do with his training camp, all that stuff, but knowing that you've been there with him, um, seeing him through the process during his hard times and training with him and kind of getting to know him as a man and seeing how he operates in his everyday life, when you see a guy like that start to kind of everything starts to come together for him, you get really excited, man. You get really proud, you know, and, and I'm super proud of that, man. I'm super impressed by him and, I remember coming into American Top Team when we first got there. We kind of got to American Top Team around around the same time. And, uh, you know, he had the great striking and I just had good wrestling. And so we instantly got partnered up because we could balance each other out. And since, that, that was like maybe seven, eight years ago, um, since then I've been able to just watch him grow and he's helped me grow as, and not just as a fighter, but as a man, like just watching the way he operates, I... I mimic a lot of things that he's done in his life and um, the way he operates with people. I try to mimic a lot of those things. So seeing him win and get his just deals and get his, uh, get his little bit of revenge, you know, that was, uh, that was exciting, man. I was so hyped. That's amazing. Um, so you want to get back to the UFC. That is your goal. How do we make this a reality? Will? like when you look at 2021 here, what are your goals for the year to help make this a reality, help make this happen? Yeah, man, it's it's tough, you know, because you know what the you know what the map is, right? Like, I know the map is all right. Well, this is a sport of what have you have what have you done for me lately, right? Um, and I recognize, all right, well, I'm I'm coming off the T ball fight, regardless of if it was you know controversial or whatnot. Coming off that fight, you know, and 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 now you have to come and realize, that, like, in this sport, you got to string together some wins, you know. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm trying to you know, find some fights and get that stuff sorted out. But I also recognize that with Aries, you know, um, I'm signed with them, but they're going to give me an opportunity to compete outside my contract. But, you know, this is, we're in a space of security also, you know. We have to be very, you have to be very 
cautious, maybe not so much cautious, but kind of slow play it right now because you could be like, oh, I'm going to go fight over here and I got, I'm got, i going to be active. But if a, the pandemic and COVID decides that, hey, now your opponent just got tested positive or something like that, you, you kind of can't be like... Um, it's kind of harder to sl- like to really get going. So I'm just trying to be patient. I'm just trying to stay patient and continue to trust that God is moving in my life. He's done nothing but bless me and my wife and my children and continue to protect them even during this difficult pandemic. And not a lot of people can say that right now. And, and fortunately, I'm one of those guys in mixed martial arts that, you know, has been taken care of and I've been treated well financially, you know, so... I, I try my best to just stay in the back and be like, look, when the fight comes, it'll come and I'll get to work and I'll do whatever I have to do to get to wherever I go and um, and and do it that way rather than, you know, be one of these guys screaming about why I'm not fighting when I'm like, yo, there's guys that are barely being able to pay their mortgage or pay their bills. So I'm like, yo, I'll, I'll, I'll hang back. I'm, I'm all right, you know couple last things before we let you go um you you, like you said it and and it's it's so true this is a what have you done for me lately sport but it's also a never say never sport will and like we alluded to earlier before you signed with the ufc the relationship between yourself and bellator wasn't stupendous you had a lot to say about them scott coker gave you a full release before the contract expired they said they didn't want to be in the will brooks business any longer and at the time you you, got mad at me he was he did I get it. Look, man, I, I can dig it. I'll be honest, bro. Like, I like, it, like we, we asked the question, if you go back, if you change anything? And I'll be honest, like, I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't change the way that those things played out. Because if I'm being completely honest, I felt like I was, I felt like disrespected, you know? And I felt like things weren't going my way, you know? Would I've, and I, I, I would I've been verbal, like, would I have been as verbal on social media as I, w- I probably would have, but I think I would have been a little bit more professional with the way I was speaking, you know, and some of the things I said. But I can tell you this much right now, man. I'm an emotional guy, and if you if I feel disrespected, I'm going to disrespect you back, but there's a limit to it, right? You have to still be, like, respectful and, like, have that kind of, like, look, man, like, I, like, like watching kind of what you say, but at the same time, it's like, yo, it, it is what it is, man. I mean, they've made some some pretty big moves over the last year or so. They just signed uh, uh, the, all their fights are going to air on Showtime. They got a lot of cool things going on, big signings. Do you think there's a chance, maybe a, a reconciliation at some point? Like any chance we could see you back in Bellator? Maybe we let bygones be bygones. Would that interest you at all? If you could get into a room with Scott Coker and maybe try to hash this thing out sometime down the road? Yeah, man, I'm open to anything. We're, like we're we're in a period of like COVID and pandemic, bro. Like you gotta. You got to be ready to adjust and jump on anything, you know, like that's just what it is. So, yeah, I have my plan of, you know, trying to get back to the UFC and looking at that. It was like, damn it, man, I left there and I I just know in my heart and in my bones that I could do better than what I did, you know. And I think there was a couple of little flashes here and there where like, oh, I, like I was showing that I could compete and be there. But mentally, emotionally, I just fell. I fell apart. I came undone. And, and you can't do that in this sport, you know, and. So, yeah, I want to try to get back to the UFC, but if that's not the case and that's not where God wants me to be and, you know, if God does some weird thing where he's like, hey, hey, uh, this window to Bellator just opened up again, I wouldn't look, man, I'm not I'm not shying away from that either. I'm just, right now, I'm just, like you said, man, we're in a time. This, this, these times that we're in right now, anything can happen. So you got to be available for everything, you know? What a story that would be. Will Brooks back in Bellator? I mean, that thing writes itself. That would be unbelievable, man. You know, That'd be unreal. Nuts. I don't even think, like, they. I don't think it will happen, but I'm open to it. But, uh, you know, I, I I upset Uncle Scott. You know, I, I, I upset him. I get it, you know, so we'll see what happens, man. There you go. Great stuff, man. I- I'm glad we we're able to do this. There's like a million other things I'd love to talk to you about, but we're unfortunately running out of time. But yeah. I got to tell you, man, looking at 2021, the the Will Brooks comeback story, this journey back to the UFC, I'm looking forward to watching it, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Spread that positivity on social media because Lord knows we need as much positivity and, and, and honesty as possible. Yeah, so thank man. you again, man. All the best thank to you, you and I appreciate you coming on, man. Can I, if, can I say one quick thing? Sure, absolutely. Hey, man, to like, and I've been doing this a lot, man. 
I think we're in a space right now where as men, we have to be very conscious of our mental health. And as men, we have so many responsibilities that we put on ourselves. Either you live in a traditional mindset where, you know, you're the breadwinner of your household and you're like that type of person or your wife is stay at home, whatever. We have to be very diligent in understanding that mental health is not just about, oh, I'm depressed or I'm anxious or I'm, I'm this or the other thing. It, it, it comes down to just like things that you can't recognize. You may not be able to see that you're depressed. It may um, manifest in something else and you are you emotionally are not happy, but you're smiling all the time, but you can't recognize it. So I would just say, man, like during this time that I've had off, that's one thing I've really focused on is being mentally, emotionally connected to who I am. And I would suggest that more men really start seeking out therapy. Even if you feel like there's nothing wrong in your life and everything's going really well, you can always use an outside perspective, outside of your friends and family, someone to talk to just in case, because you might talk to a therapist or something and something pop up and you don't even realize it. Like, oh, wait, what? Like, where'd that come from? So, yeah, man, I think a lot of men and a lot of women and a lot of athletes in mixed martial arts especially should start seeking out mental health and help mental health and therapy and things like that. Well said, man. Couldn't Could not agree with you more. Thank you for the time, Will. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Take care.